gluconeogenesis. The synthesis of glucose molecules from non-carbohydrate precursors is known as gluconeogenesis or uh, neoglucogenesis. What is gluconeogenesis? We know. And the gluconeogenesis is nothing but the formation of the new glucose and uh, glycolysis means the breakdown of glucose or the exactly opposite pathways. But gluconeogenesis is not completely a reversal of the glycolysis because there are seven reversible reactions of the glycolysis are common for both gluconeogenesis and glycolysis but there are three irreversible steps of glycolysis which are bypassed by the different enzymes called as key enzymes of gluconeogenesis. They are namely pyruvate carboxylase, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase and glucose 6-phosphatase. So what are the precursors of the gluconeogenesis? Lactate from contracting muscles as well as RBC is the source, pyruvate from the glycolysis and the glucogenic amino acids gives of uh, glutamate, aspartate and alanine and propionate and glycerol. All these compounds are the key factors or we can say the precursors of gluconeogenesis. So now the propionate and glycerol also comes under this category. So here what is the site of gluconeogenesis? Gluconeogenesis occurs mainly in the cytosol although some precursors are produced in the mitochondria but majority means major steps of the gluconeogenesis takes place in the cytosol only. However, it mainly takes place in the liver that is 90% and to a lesser extent in the renal cortex only 10%. So now let us concentrate on reactions of gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis closely resembles the reversed pathway of glycolysis as you can see over here. Although it is not completely reversal of the glycolysis because the three irreversible steps of the glycolysis are catalyzed by the enzymes hexokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. These three stages bypassed by alternate enzymes specific to the gluconeogenesis are pyruvate carboxylase is the first enzyme. So this pyruvate in the cytoplasm enters the mitochondria. Then what happens is carboxylation of the pyruvate takes place and it gives off oxaloacetate and it is catalyzed by the mitochondrial enzyme called as pyruvate carboxylase. Then it needs the coenzyme that is biotin as well as ATP for the carboxylase to work. And the second one, second bypass step is a phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. So as you can see over here very clearly that in the cytosol the enzyme converts oxaloacetate to phosphoenol pyruvate with the removal of carbon dioxide molecule. So GTP donates the phosphate and the net effect of these two reactions in the conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate and this replaces the irreversible step in the glycolysis catalyzed by the pyruvate kinase which is the step 9 of glycolysis. So the partial reversal of glycolysis that is uh, the phosphoenol pyruvate undergoes further reactions catalyzed by the glycolytic enzymes finally to form fructose 1,6-bisphosphate where the glycolysis steps 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 are very easy because they are reversible and all these reactions are freely reversible in nature to stop at another junction that is fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The enzyme which is present in the liver called as fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase enzyme. So here the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is then acted upon by the fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase to form fructose 6-phosphate and another step is bypassed. So this will bypass the step of PFK1 reaction that is step 3 of glycolysis. So then fructose 6-phosphate is isomerized to glucose 6-phosphate by the freely reversible reaction catalyzed by the hexose phosphate isomerase which is the second step of glycolysis. Now at the final step glucose 6-phosphate is produced. Now the glucose 6-phosphate should convert into glucose but there is an irreversible step by means of hexokinase and glucokinase and this step is bypassed by another enzyme which is located in the liver called as glucose 6-phosphatase. So 
glucose 6-phosphatase is the enzyme which is present in the liver, converts glucose 6-phosphate to glucose and majority of the glucose 6-phosphatase is located in the liver but lesser extent in the kidney as well as in the intestinal mucosa but absent in the muscles. So this is what you need to know about uh, the reactions of the gluconeogenesis. Now, what are the substrates for gluconeogenesis? The first one is the lactate which gives you the Cori cycle. Lactate is mainly formed from anaerobic glycolysis of glucose in the skeletal muscles as well as RBC. This lactate diffused to the blood. From there, it carried to the liver. In the liver, the lactate is converted into glucose by gluconeogenesis and transport to the tissues via blood. This recycling of the lactate is called as Cori cycle. And uh, what is the significance of Cori cycle? So, Cori cycle provides an indirect way of utilizing muscle glycogen to maintain the blood glucose levels in fasting conditions. And next is glucose alanine cycle. In fasting conditions, alanine is produced from pyruvate by transamination process in the muscles. This pyruvate is produced from glucose or glycogen through glycolysis, right? Yeah. So, the produced alanine transported to the liver through the blood. In the liver, what happens is the alanine is again converted into pyruvate through the transamination reaction. And the pyruvate is converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis, which enters the blood and utilized by the muscle. And this process is called as glucose alanine cycle. What is the significance of this glucose alanine cycle? Even the cycle provides an indirect way of utilizing muscle glycogen to maintain blood glucose levels in the fasting conditions and uh, regulation of gluconeogenesis. The four key gluconeogenetic enzymes are the regulatory enzymes of this pathway. First is the glucagon and cortisol that is glucocorticoids increases the rate of gluconeogenesis by inducing them and insulin decreases the rate of gluconeogenesis by suppressing them, right? Next is the allosteric regulation. Pyruvate carboxylase is activated by acetyl-CoA and inhibited by ADP. And the fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase is activated by the citrate and inhibited by fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and AMP. And gluconeogenesis is enhanced by the ATP. And at last, let us discuss about the energetics of the gluconeogenesis. The reactions catalyzed by the pyruvate carboxylase, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase and phosphoglycerate kinase requires 1 ATP each. So, 3 ATPs are utilized by one pyruvate residue to produce one half molecule of glucose or 6 ATPs are required to generate one glucose molecule. So now what is the clinical significance of uh, this pathway? Certain metabolites that are produced in the tissues accumulate in the blood like lactate, glycerol, propionate. So gluconeogenesis is the pathway effectively clears these products from the blood. So during starvation, gluconeogenesis maintains the normal blood glucose levels by utilizing the products produced in the tissues. In this process, Liver plays a major role in maintaining the blood glucose level because only liver can replenish blood glucose through the gluconeogenesis due to the presence of an enzyme called as glucose 6-phosphatase. Brain, erythrocytes, testes, kidney are extremely dependent on the glucose for continuous supply of energy because human brain alone requires 120 grams of glucose per day out of 160 grams needed by the entire body. Here the glucose is the only source of energy to the skeletal muscle under anaerobic conditions. So this is what you need to know about uh, the gluconeogenesis and its clinical importance.